and welcome to another session of the free family workshops from the Sharon Lynn Wilson Center for the Arts in beautiful Brookfield. You're here with me, artist Tiffany Canopo, and I have some helpers here today, my daughter Hazel and my son Hudson, who's making some really awesome faces right now. Um, we are going to be doing our third installment of our fun Tiffany Canopo's Crafty Kitchen Table. Here we are at our kitchen table, right? Do you guys have your school here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you have dinner here? Mm -hmm. Breakfast? Mm -hmm. Yeah, art projects? No. no. We have all the things here. We have all the things. This is what we do, right? We have all the things here in our house. So we're here today to bring you some new things uh, to do so that maybe you can do something a little more exciting with your kids and have a new art project. So Hazel's over here in front of our, our examples. So we have some examples of what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna to be making salt dough and these are some examples that I actually made with my kids. No, I made them. Yeah, Hudson made this one. This is a shark. A shark. And Hazel made this one. What did we put in that salt dough? Do you remember? Uh, a leaf. A leaf, you're right. Good job. We put a leaf in this one. So we'll show you some examples of what we're doing. Um, and and I'll, beads. Yeah, we made beads too. Here, I'm going to show everything. Otherwise, people will be sad. Don't we made really beads. These, Hudson much. made these. And then we made some threading beads before. So I'll show you how to make those too. So we have lots of things to do today. So there's one recipe, and I will show you the recipe for a small batch of dough and a large, or a, a medium batch of dough. We made the medium batch of dough, and we made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of these medallions. We made a shark, and we made a whole bowl of these beads. All right. So the medium batch is pretty big. We're gonna make the small. I'm gonna make the small batch today with them, just to show you the recipe. But you can scale it up or down just by doing some quick multiplication. Okay. So. For this recipe, we will need some flour. So a whole big container of it here. So yeah, we'll measure it in just a sec. We need some salt. We'll need some water. Optional food coloring if you have it. If you don't, not a big deal. Also the things we're gonna need, the supplies we'll need from our kitchen, our bowl, a medium sized bowl. This is a good size. A spoon, a mixing spoon, some measuring cups and spoons. So if you have a set of those, these are also good to practice fractions with, with your kids. And that's some measuring spoons. And then we're going to need a straw or two. And these, you know, if you use them one time, you can rinse them out and use them again. And then maybe some toothpicks. These might come in handy. Or if you have skewers um, for making kebabs, those will come in handy too. Mm -hmm. And then um, if you're going to be doing this project that I'll be doing with Hazel, you'll need some things from outside. So some leaves, um, some some like uh, pine boughs, these work really well, or maybe some things from your shrubs. Just make sure that they have been previously alive. So like um, dead leaves that are really dry won't be very good for this project. Pine cones will work well too, rocks, whatever you have. Okay, so let's get started. So usually when we do this, we have to split up the measuring, right? Because there's two of them. And if we don't split up the measuring, it's a problem. So let's get started with the flour. Hudson's going to be in charge of the flour today. So he's, I'm making the small batch recipe right now. Hudson's going to be measuring one cup of flour. So I'm going to let him find a cup and measure one cup of flour. I'm going to be measuring a quarter cup. Oh, well, that's fine. Then you can use that to scrape it off. We have a knife sometimes in our um, flour container to scrape the top off so you can measure it appropriately when we're baking, right? You guys baking some cakes, some pies. I just made a cake. Hudson just made a cake yesterday. We've been making pasta and bread too. We gotta work on the bread, right, Hudson? All right, Hudson measured one cup of flour. That goes right in the bowl. Hazel is gonna help me measure a quarter cup of salt. Yay! Yeah, can you hold it? Do you want to pour? Which one do you want to do? Pour. Oh, I'm gonna measure the water, please. There we go. We'll pour it in. This is just regular table salt. Please don't use the special Himalayan rock salt that's pink and all that stuff. We just need this, you know, regular table salt that comes out of the shaker. So we're gonna get a quarter cup of salt. Now I know sometimes people have been saying that it's been hard to find flour. Um, we haven't had any problems finding flour or salt. Um, so I feel like it's okay for us just to use a cup of it for one of our art projects. Um, if you guys are having problems finding flour, then, you know, feel free to not make this project and maybe um, write down the ingredients for later when you do find a big batch of flour. All right, so then we're gonna measure in, for this small batch, we're gonna measure in a quarter cup of water. I'm gonna do this part because then it will be fair. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a quarter cup of water. 
plus two tablespoons. So I've got one quarter cup here. And I don't want a tablespoon. No, I'm going to do the tablespoon. Uh, I'll measure all the water. Okay. So now I'll let you mix for one second. Then my turn. Then it's your turn. Yeah, we'll share. Remember, we share. Okay, good job. Now it's Hazel's turn to mix while I put in the two tablespoons of water. This is a super good recipe. Um, the proportions in this are just right, so it makes a really good dough. Sometimes it's nice just to have a little extra water and flour sitting by just in case your dough is a little too sticky or too dry. So we'll keep this extra water and the extra flour right next door just in case. I'm going to mix it okay. You did a good job. So you can see it's starting to come together. It looks a little bit like um, the beginnings of like pizza dough or pasta, if you're making your own pasta. Yeah, we've been making pasta and all sorts of fun stuff. We made the bow ties. Yeah, we made bow ties, we made ravioli. You guys making some good stuff in your kitchens? Hope so. So now at this point, it's kind of crumbly. So at this point, I'll use my hands to just mix it together. And this is the part where I kind of like to do this I know I always tell people to let their kids do it, but I like to do this part by myself because this can be either really messy, um, really sticky, or really dry. And sometimes you kind of have to adjust. Make so we need, feel really dry. it does. So we gotta add a little bit of water. This is a little dry, so I'm just adding a little bit of water. Can you move back just a stitch? I don't want to hit you. Thank you. All right, here we go. So it's starting to come together a little bit better. Usually when I do this, I like to stand up so I can get a little better angle on this, but we'll do it like this. It's still kind of crumbly, so I'm gonna keep adding a little bit of water, just little drops, maybe just a less than a teaspoon, because you don't wanna to add too much and then have to add extra flour. Hazel, can you put that down? That's your brother's. Oh, you don't wanna break his teeth don't off? Touch. Don't break his teeth off. Don't touch. That's good, thanks Hudson. Here we go. Maybe you could thread some of these out for me while we're waiting. Okay. Yeah, so one of the projects I made is this threading um, project. Well, actually, Hudson and I made it when he was little. So we used some um, cookie cutters that were actually in our Play-Doh um, container. And we put some holes in them with some straws and then made them for threading work. So you can do that too. All right, now, my dough is, it's kind of sucked up all the flour and it looks really good. Can you please back up a second? Thank you. Kids are so eager. So I'm just going to take one minute here and just give it a good knead. We want to make it so it's a little smushy. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know if you can notice, I have these um, flexible like cutting boards out. So that way, when we're all done, we can just throw them right in the sink and wash them up. Thank you, Hudson, for, uh, for demonstrating. So if you can see, my dough is kind of a little falling apart and a little crumbly. So I think I'm just going to add one more little dot of water to it. Sometimes you just need to... Get it to the right consistency. You don't want it to be too squishy that it sticks on your hands. And you don't want it to be too firm that it crumbles apart. So, you know, you gotta go right in the middle. So you can see my hands, I have a little bit on, but it's not sticking, so that's good. This is getting really good. So what I'm gonna do now, thank you, Hudson, thank you. I, I understand. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is divide the dough. Now this was a small batch, so it, it makes a good amount. I don't know if you guys can see. Um, so this was this would be enough to make two or three small little sculptures. Um, I made the medium batch and we had a lot of dough. So that was only two cups of flour for the medium batch. So I'm gonna break it in half. I'm gonna save just one little the one little circle for myself. And then I'm gonna let Hudson go to town because he so wants wants to do it. Oh my goodness. And he is gonna show you how to incorporate some food coloring. So in the examples that Hudson made, these are little beads. He colored the salt dough with food coloring before we baked it. So this is what he's going to be doing. So he's opening it up, putting in how many dots? A couple. A couple, like three maybe? Three dots of food coloring and then smushing it together. Now just a heads up, um, you might get a little food coloring on your hands and if you don't like that then, you know, don't do it. Um, but it is food coloring and it does wash out so it will come off. Hazel, look, I have yours ready. What do you want to make today? I want to make, I need the lid. Do you want to do some food coloring? Yeah. The more you work with it, the nicer it gets in your hands and the smoother it gets. So I really like this recipe. It's really nice. And the other thing, can I help you please? Let me help you please. The other thing I like about it is that you can cook it in the oven. So your projects can be dry and ready for you in just a couple hours. I know, I'm going to help you, okay? 
so we're gonna smush it flat. So Hazel wants hers to be blue, right? And red and pink. Oh, okay, let's make a couple then. Yeah. So um that's good, just like that. So um you can you can there are two options for making your dough colored. You can color it with food coloring. I know how. Oh, okay. Let me help you then. You can do the next one. You can color it with food coloring, or if you want, you can cook it and then you can paint it with regular paints. So those are options for, here you go, can you smush it around? Those are options for you to do. So Hudson's doing a good job mixing his colors up. He's got a little bit of yellow green on his hands, but he's doing all right. Hazel's mixing hers up. Um, just as a warning, always a good idea if you're using food coloring to put out a nice, um, a nice table cover uh, so you don't get it on your wood table because it, sometimes it doesn't like to come out. Can I help you with that please? Okay. Can you smush it out really nice and flat? So Hudson, what are you going to be making today? I'm going to mix two colors together. Are you going to make some beads? I don't know. Okay, let's do it together. Let's do it No! Okay, please. Okay. Okay. One, two. I barely make any color. I know. you got to smush it around. That's good, Hazel. Thanks. Okay, now it's dripping out, so we got to make sure it... Wait. Hold on. Hold on. We're having a food color emergency. All right. I'm going to make sure we don't get it on our shirt. Oh yeah, and I forgot. I forgot we should probably put on some smocks or some yeah. aprons or something. Did we put on our aprons today? I don't care. Uh, uh, uh. Food coloring does come out of your hands, but it doesn't really love to come out of your clothes. Um, so. Ow! You just cracked my finger. Yeah, so right now, what I'm gonna be doing is just making mine into an example like this. So, I'm just gonna be rolling it out. Hazel, you working on mixing? Okay, I'm gonna help you one time with that so we don't have a disaster. All right. Okay, you show me. One, two, three. Gentle. One, two, three. Thank you. Now fold it up. All right. So what we're going to be doing just to make these wonderful little nature discs is to make a ball. Um, I think I might make my ball just a little smaller today. Roll out a lovely ball. And mine's got a little purple in it now because I have purple food coloring in my fingers. <laughs> we need a little and then more of that. Yeah, you do. I'll, I'll help you smush it in just a minute. And then smush it out nice and flat on a nice flat surface. Then take whatever nature item you want. So I'm just going to use maybe this little twig here. This is from a pine tree. If you have some shrubs or something around you, that will work lovely. Then I'm going to find a nice flat surface. So I'm going to use my tablecloth and I'm just going to press this right on top. Okay, Nice, even, firm pressure. Then you can see it's kind of stuck, so you can pull it off and you get this wonderful impression of your natural item. Now to make a hole in it, you can hang it up. I just like to use a little straw and then you can just center it at the top. Um, do a little bit of this, wookie, 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 woo. And then it comes right out. Check it. Isn't that great? So simple. Now when I'm done with these, I like to put them on a pan. So I have a pan waiting here for me and I have a piece of parchment paper on top of it. Um, I like to do that so I don't ruin this nice shiny pan. Um, so I put it on my parchment paper and then I can put it in the oven at 250 degrees for two hours and it will bake them nice and dry. I like to flip mine halfway through. Um, so at one hour, I'll set an alarm and then flip them so they dry on both sides. So what I'm gonna do now is just go over quickly just to make a simple bead. You can just roll your dough into any shape you want. So I just made it into like a little circle and then insert a toothpick or if you have a skewer that works too. Um, where are you going, honey? Okay. You can insert the toothpick or a skew inside and just make sure that the hole is big enough to fit through whatever you're going to be um, fishing through there. Maybe like a piece of stretchy cord or something like that cleaner. or a pipe cleaner, whatever you want. Um, and then you can put that on your tray to put in the oven. Um, oh, no thanks. That's from Hudson's project. Here, I have a straw right here for you. Um, the other thing that you can do that I don't know if um, I showed you close up, um, you can do some cutouts with some cookie cutters, um, and then you can use those for some beading work. All right, so you can make a project for your little one too. So quickly, to do that, you just take your, your special um, salt dough, smush it out, and then, I'm gonna borrow this one, okay, just for a sec. 
push down on your cookie cutter, give it a little wiggle wiggle, then pick it back up. You might have to push it out with your finger and then ta-da, you have a little heart or whatever cookie shape that you decided. And then you just have to poke a little hole in it. I like to do so with my um, straw because it makes a nice big hole and then you can put it to dry. Pretty simple, right? Or the other thing that you can do is if your kids aren't making things that they want to dry, they can just play with it. So it's sort of like Play-Doh. Um, so you can go ahead and make whatever kind of sculptures or um, projects you want to make with it and then smush it and then put it in a Ziploc bag or a container um, that has a tight lid uh, and then you can store it. I like to store mine in the refrigerator. I think it's about five, six days. Um, that's a good amount of storage time because again, this is a food product and you do touch it with the germs on your fingers. Um, so about, about after about five or six days, you probably want to get rid of it. Uh, and then just uh, one more warning, um, this salt dough is very attractive to dogs um, and they get really sick. Nope. Uh, so if you can, please make sure that this, all these little bits and pieces that you have stay away from your dogs because uh, they, if they eat a lot of it, they'll get really ill. Um, on the other hand though, if your toddler decides to take a little bite of this, it is just flour and salt um, and they won't get sick. So um, you probably don't want them to eat a whole entire container of it. Uh, but if they take a little nibble, um, they won't get sick, and it doesn't taste very good, so they won't eat it, I promise. It tastes like salt. Yeah, it's pretty salty and not very good at all. Um, well, I think that's all we have for you today. I think our, we have a lot of food coloring that's happening today, a lot of hands that are going to need to be washed later. Um, so I hope you guys are having a good time with this project. You can use it in many different ways, or just use it for a Play-Doh uh, and just have some fun. Uh, hopefully everybody's doing well and staying safe and healthy. Um, we're looking forward to seeing you at the Sharon the Wilson Center for some art classes sometime in the near future, hoping sometime in June, July. Um, so please check that website um, and see when the classes are open. Again, everybody stay safe and well and have a great day. Mom, I need you to help me. Okay. I, I need a little bit more paper. Okay. Move your body.